All right, hello folks. Uh, we are back with um, video, uh, the video about uh, concept 22.2, which is going to cover speciation. I have my plague doctor Squishmallow with me. His name is um, Mortimer. Um, and so we're gonna be talking through this uh, concept with you together. Okay, so um, the idea is that uh, speciation can happen in two big ways, allopatric and sympatric. So in allopatric um, speciation, gene flow is going to be interrupted uh, due to a population being divided by some large geographical um, barrier. So for example, um, let's say we have a lake and hypothetically a giant rock wall forms in the middle of the lake. That's going to cut uh, that particular species of fish that's living in the lake into two and so uh, that's going to prevent genes from being swapped. And so you're going to have uh, two different species formed. Okay. And so um, they give an example in the book. It's um, the populations of the mosquito fish, right? So that's going to be the idea that um, they basically found that um, this was um, allopatric, um, allopatric speciation. And uh, what they basically found was that uh, based on, uh, there were different uh, predatory uh, threats um, for these two different species of uh, mosquito fish populations, and so they found that they had um, evolved to have certain adaptations that helped them um, evolve the predatory, uh, the predatory threats um, within. Uh, their their habitats. Okay, and so uh, there's more evidence for this. Um, there's the example, uh, the, uh, the another example that the book gave us about um, about basically um, fruit flies. And so what they did was they had this population of fruit flies, right? And uh, then they divided the population of fruit flies in half. Some of these fruit flies they raised on the starch medium, some were raised on the maltose medium. Um, and so what, they hap what happened was um, they put the two flies back together after being raised on different mediums, um, and they found that uh, they, they did not um, mate, the, the two species uh, did not mate. Uh, for whatever reason, um, they mated within their species, right? So the maltose flies are gonna mate with the maltose flies and the starch flies are gonna mate with the starch flies. Uh, the maltose flies um, pretty much did not mate with the starch flies. Um, and so that in indicates that uh, speciation um, has occurred um, through, through allopatric means. Um, and so, um, they also give an example of shrimp um, and the isthmus, which is uh, basically um, kind of this island-like structure. Um, but essentially what they found is that um, allopatric speciation was responsible for, um, for the speciation of these different kind of uh, shrimps. Okay. And so um, it's also important to note that um, due to um, physical separation, um, it's not necessarily a biological barrier. It's a, it's, it's a physical barrier, right? Um, biological barriers, um, which were, uh, which, which are discussed, um, in in figure 22.3 which um, deals with the the prezygotic and postzygotic barriers um, those are going to be biological reproductive 
uh, barriers as opposed to uh, physical barriers. The physical barrier is the rock wall, the biological uh, barrier would be like the genitals not being able to mate, uh, not being able to, uh, to come together. Okay, so next we have sympatric speciation. That's the idea that uh, speciation is going to occur in populations that live in the same geographic area, area but um, there's going to be some reproductive issue um, that is going to cause speciation. So allopatric, the rock wall. Sympatric, no rock wall, but there's some reproductive issue. Um, so for example, um, polyploidy. Polyploidy is um, an example of sympatric speciation. Polyploidy is very common in plants. We learned about this in the last, um, the last, uh, if, if you took the cell last semester, uh, we learned about this last semester. Um, and polyploidy is uh, when cells will end up with extra sets of chromosomes. And how does this happen? Well, so during meiosis or uh, mitosis, um, during anaphase, uh, the chromosomes are going to get pulled apart, right? And so uh, each cell is ideally supposed to have an equal amount of chromosomes. However, um, there's a process called non-disjunction, which is when certain cells end up with way more chromosomes and certain cells end up with way less. Um, and so that is called um, polyploidy. Um, and so there's two distinct forms of polyploidy that uh, have been observed in, in plant, in mostly plant populations. Um, so an autopolyploid is going to be um, a species, uh, an organism that has more than two chromosome sets that are all going to be derived from a single species. So what this means is that like due to some issue in cell division, um, this is going to double a cell's chromosome number. Um, from the original number, which is like 2n, n being like the number of chromosomes, uh, to a tetraploid number, which would be like tetra meaning 4, so 4n. So from 2n to 4n, and this is coming from one species. And so then you have uh, the second form of polyploidy, which is going to be when two different species interbreed and they're going to produce hybrid offspring. And so um, most of these hybrids that are produced are going to be sterile um, because the sets of chromosomes um, are not going to be able to pair during meiosis. Um, so figure, uh, you know, meiosis is happening, right? That's the exchange of the, um, of the sex chromosomes. Um, and so if we're having this, this crossing over and the other things that happen during meiosis, um, that won't uh, be able to happen because uh, the chromosomes can't even pair from one species, uh, can't even pair with the chromosomes from the second species. Um, However, um, infertile hybrids are able to uh, reproduce asexually in some cases. Um, and so, um, in that case, um, that can turn a sterile hybrid into um, a fertile polyploid, um, which is going to be called an allopolyploid. So these, these hybrids that were supposedly sterile are able to reproduce um, asexually, um, so you know, without um, they're they're able to reproduce on their own, um, and so you can have a whole line of species start from this. And so that's exact that's exactly why the biological species concept doesn't exactly make the most sense because you have organisms that are able to reproduce asexually. Um, and so they essentially go in to say, um, basically go in to describe how um, there's a lot of examples of this in nature. And in fact, it's like 70% of like all plant species that we have today have been formed through um, like this polyploidy method. Um, and so 
here, uh, we're going to be talking about the other ways of sympatric speciation. Um, so habitat differentiation. So this is going to um, occur when a subpopulation, so kind of a small subset of the original population, is going to exploit a habitat or resource that is not going to be used by the parent population. Um, and so um, there's going to be post-zygotic barriers um, to reproduction due to this habitat differentiation, um, which is going to limit gene flow. So they're in the same place, but uh, based upon how they um, kind of the, the subsets of the population um, utilize um, a certain habitat that can cause um, post-zygotic barriers. Um, and then we have sexual selection. Um, and so, um, essentially, um, the idea is that um, certain mate choice um, based on, um, you know, all of these different sexual dimorphism factors um, can obviously going to, uh, can act as a reproductive barrier that is going to keep species separate, right? So if, um, you know, certain, um, I think the book gave an example of like cichlids, which are a certain type of fish found in Lake Victoria, if certain, um, if, if females are only going to choose certain males, that's obviously going to be an example of sympatric speciation because they're all in the lake together. Right, um, but it's a matter of whether or not they actually choose to uh, mate with one another for whatever reason. So that's an example of um, sexual selection. Okay, and so uh, that just about covers a uh, concept check. I mean, oops, concept uh, 22.2. And then in the next video, we will be covering uh, the concept checks uh, since I've mentioned in my last video that it kind of caps me at 15 minutes and so uh, stay tuned for uh, concept check 22.2.